welcome back to my channel for another video. So I am so excited about today's video because it is a kickoff to a new series here on this channel and it includes a couple of my very favorite things, coffee and fall time. I have gotten so many requests over the years from you guys asking me to film videos about coffee recipes and stuff like that and so I have decided to actually make it a seasonal series and every few months I'm going to be sharing with you the coffee recipes that I'm loving for that season and since I love autumn, fall time so very much, I thought this would be the perfect season to start. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you three different coffee recipes that I've been absolutely loving. And for those of you who are watching this video who don't actually drink coffee, I have a bonus recipe toward the end of the video just for you. It's a non-coffee fall drink that I know you are going to love. And Weston actually helped me come up with the recipe, which is really cool. Um, but before we hop into it, if you are excited for this series and you you enjoy this video while you're watching it then definitely let me know by giving the video a thumbs up and if you are new here if it's your first time at my channel then welcome I make lifestyle and mommy videos over here on this channel every week and if you like what you see I would love it so much if you would subscribe and don't forget to turn your notifications on I do bonus videos every once in a while that are not a part of my regular weekly upload schedule and the next one coming out that's a bonus video is going to be sharing with you how I transformed my coffee stain in preparation for this video and it kind of goes hand in hand with this one so definitely turn your notifications on so you don't miss that video but let's hop into my favorite fall time coffee recipes so everyone has a different preference for how strong they like their coffee or how they like to brew their coffee. How I prefer to make my coffee is either by pulling a couple of shots from my espresso machine or brewing it in my French press. Today I will be sharing one of these recipes as an iced coffee, but all three of these recipes can either be made hot or cold. And let me know in the comments right now if you are an iced coffee lover like I am or if you prefer your coffee to be nice and hot. Of course, I have to start out with the most important coffee flavor of the season, and that is pumpkin spice. And this is my take on a pumpkin spice iced latte. I am going to be using as natural and real food products as I can, and so today's pumpkin spice latte actually has real pumpkin in it. And since I am making this cold, I am going to be mixing my sweetener and flavoring in a separate little bowl. But if you are making the hot version of this drink, go ahead and mix these first ingredients into your cup before you put your coffee in. To start, I'm going to add half a tablespoon of real unsweetened pumpkin puree. Whatever I don't use in my coffee during the week, I can store in the fridge or freeze for another time. This adds that quintessential pumpkin flavor that makes it feel very authentic and very fall time, but the thing that really kicks it up a notch is the pumpkin pie spice blend. It's super easy to find this blend at any grocery store. I just picked this up at Target and it has all of those spicy, nutty, really good flavors that remind us of eating pumpkin pie. And so I'm going to add a teaspoon of that and then add a little bit of my sweetener of choice on a daily basis, which is blue agave syrup that I just get at Costco. I add anywhere from half a tablespoon to a full tablespoon, depending on how sweet I want my coffee and everyone has a different preference as far as that goes. And I will just mix up all of those ingredients together until they're well incorporated. Next, I'm going to pull two shots of coffee from my Breville espresso machine. Again, you can use brewed coffee or any form of coffee that you prefer. I will add the shots of espresso while they are freshly pulled so that they don't lose their flavor. I will put that straight into my pumpkin mixture and mix that all together so that there's no chunks or anything left. And then I will pour that over ice. 
I'm back to having dairy in my diet and I'm so glad about that. So I am adding some half and half to this latte. I've been inspired by the trend of cold foam lately and so I use just this little mixer that I got from Ikea for like under $5 to mix up a little bit of the half and half in my pitcher and I make that nice and foamy and I top off my latte with a little bit of that cold foam. And this can be done with almond milk or soy milk, coconut milk is actually really good in this, whatever sort of milk you prefer to have in your coffee totally works. Today for me, it's a little bit of half and half. Sometimes on top of that cold foam, I will add just a little bit more of the pumpkin pie spice blend and it is so yummy and spicy and very pumpkin-y, perfect for the beginning of fall and for feeling like it is the autumn time. The next coffee that I have for you is one that brings me back to my childhood. It is a Mexican mocha. And this really reminds me of the fall time. After we were done with schoolwork, my friend and I would spend time together playing and her mom, who had family that were Mexican immigrants, she would make us Mexican hot chocolate and it was so spicy and warm and it actually warmed you from the inside out. And that is why I've chosen to make this one of the hot beverages for today. While I'm waiting for coffee to brew in my French press, I am going to start by mixing up some drinking chocolate. I love this brand. It's so rich and yummy and it has that sort of dark chocolate flavor, which I really prefer. And then I am going to add just a little bit of cayenne pepper to it. This adds that heat without really altering the flavor and it makes it so rich and delicious. When my coffee is done brewing in the French press, I'm going to add it to my hot chocolate and red pepper mixture and mix that all up together. I add a little bit of half and half and top it with a little bit more of that cayenne pepper and enjoy. Typically mochas are served with a healthy portion of whipped cream on top, but for my everyday coffee, I do try to keep it as low in sugar as I can. And so I have opted to not have the whipped cream, but that's definitely something you can add if you wanna go that route. Next, I have my favorite coffee beverage that I have been having in this last month. It has been so yummy and it is my maple nut latte. I start with a little bit of almond paste and I was sure to find a paste that didn't have any artificial flavoring in it and so you get the true flavor of almonds. It's kind of like an Italian amaretto latte. It tastes so amazing. To make the almond paste a little easier to work with, I will throw it in the microwave for about 10 seconds to soften it up and then I will add that to my mug as well as about a tablespoon of 100% pure maple syrup and this is what really brings the flavor of this drink together. I'll then add my coffee to the mug and whisk it all together to make sure that it's nice and mixed up and then I will add some steamed milk. You can make steamed milk pretty easily on your stove top, but I use the steamer wand on my espresso machine to make rich velvety foam that can go on top and really make it a true latte, which actually, because I'm doing a free pour, it's technically a cappuccino, but let's just ignore that. This tastes like something that you would eat during like the Halloween and Thanksgiving season. It has this amazing nutty, flavor and then you mix that with the maple syrup and it just brings it to another level. The almond paste actually has little bits of real almond in it and it settles to the bottom and at the end it just has this nice little nutty crunch that I've really enjoyed and this has been my absolute favorite drink recently and I hope you guys enjoy it too. And last but not least, my bonus non-coffee fall beverage. This is actually one that Weston helped me come up with. It was his brainchild. If you guys saw my How to Cozy Your Home for Fall video, you would have seen that I have been enjoying simmer pots on my stove where I add lots of different herbs and spices and pieces of fruit and that simmers on my stove all day and fills my home with a gorgeous, warm, spicy fall time aroma. And one day, 
my husband Weston came home to a simmer pot on the stove and said, I really want to actually drink this. Why don't you throw all of this into some apple juice or apple cider, put it in the crock pot and let that simmer all day. And by the end of the day, you have a really yummy drink and he's a genius. So that's what I have decided to do and it is so yummy. This can be really whatever you make it and you can customize the ingredients how you like it. But lately, Weston and I have really enjoyed just putting apple cider in there, a few cinnamon sticks, grating some fresh nutmeg. I'll put a sprig of rosemary in there. It's not just a savory flavor. It can really work well with apple flavors and it just adds this fresh crispness to the flavor of this cider. It is so yummy and after it's been simmering for a while it is so warming but refreshing at the same time and Weston and I will sip a little bit of it and eat some popcorn and catch some Netflix and we've really been enjoying this. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and these coffee and drink recipes for the fall time. If you decide to recreate any of these recipes, don't forget to take a picture of it and share it on your Instagram and tag me. I would love to see what you guys come up with based on these recipes that I've shared with you today. I've been loving making these fall themed videos for you all and I know you guys have enjoyed it too. So make sure that you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on so you don't miss my next fall themed videos as we head into the holiday season. Thank you all so much for watching today's video and I'll catch you later.